Hey guys, welcome to Delicious Home and Garden. Today we're going to take a late spring tour, which is different from our first spring tour. You'll get to see lots of things going on in the garden and what we've planted so far. So join me as we go ahead and start our tour. Thanks again for watching. Hey guys, so I'm going to give you another garden tour. I hope you all have been having a wonderful spring. So I know the last tour that I gave, we didn't have much going on. It was really early spring, but now it's late spring, almost. I think it's like two or three weeks more to summer. And I just want to show you. You remember we had fake tulips in here? <laughs> Look at our baskets. They're going crazy. So the way we created this basket, this is our... Um, oh gosh, the name is slipping me right now, but I'll remember in a minute. beautiful those of you who know the bud I don't know I'm having like a little bit of amnesia right now beautiful basket so this one um, we've added the potato vine both colors the lime and the red and this is our house plant so you can definitely do that. Of course, these are not house plants, but this is a house plant. And then we've just put the flowers around the base. The birds like to sit here. And here again, the same thing, matching. I'm gonna show you the garden bed. I'm sure you remember how desperate it looked. And then I was talking to you guys about having more color. So we were going to change up the bed. This is the front. And here is the garden bed. Let me see if I can show you there. You see that? So this is my poppy. It comes back every year. A lot of these flowers come back every year but what I've done is gone ahead and spread out split up my peony so I've lined the center of the bed with the peony and at the back there and all around the back I've put my Shasta daisy and they get about four feet three to four feet high and then I've incorporated a little bit of um, annuals. So I'm getting that color that I want. I wanted and they're doing fabulous, as you can see. Here's one of my favorites for the spring because it only blooms in the spring is the bleeding heart. The peony also really only blooms in spring, early summer. So that's what I was saying, that once that's done blooming, I'll need something to take over. So that's how we changed it up. And Buddha's got two little succulent pots to keep him busy. I don't know why for the life of me, I can't remember this plant. Gardenia that's what it is it's a gardenia okay gardenias are great to bring inside you just have to watch that they get um, bugs especially in this area um, I don't know if it's because of the smell or the sap so that's the only issue with it but they do well inside this is um, something new we added and in this bin is my sorrel. 
I know that they like full, full sun, and this is the spot, the hottest spot in the yard. So I added it here. We'll keep you posted on how that's gonna go. But just imagine if I can make my own sorrel drink from my own sorrel. We have some arugula here. Different salads are coming. You can see the green onions are having no issue. Some short, stocky kale. I actually prefer kale, growing kale more than lettuce. I like the flavor of the kale. So we went ahead and planted these also. This is cute. This is a paper flower. Hear that? It's not dead. This is just the way it is. Really cool and they come in a lot of colors. I wanted to do this video earlier but we were so busy planting and cleaning up the yard that I didn't get to it so you guys missed some of the spring blooms, but it's okay. Butterflies love, love these. That's my main goal when I plant. And these are edible flowers that I grew from seed. They were in the uh, greenhouse. Really cute. They look like little sparklers. So here, this area here is my strawberry area, you can see. They've been having a rough time, I don't know why, but they're coming, coming along. And the ones over here are doing excellent. So, go figure. Strawberries again. They have a lot of flowers, so that will eventually turn into strawberries. See that? In this area, I put a lot of edible flowers so that we can use for our salads. Also, I grew these from seed. And we got our cooking area that we made up. And for those of you who watched the Palmyra video, I want to show you how the palmiras are doing, also known as frangipani. So they're doing really well. I didn't have any that died. Although I was a bit worried about this one, you can see. But we'll hold that and see. This one's giving flowers already with no leaves. Very odd looking. <laughs> Look at that beauty, and it's pretty huge. They're really, really sweet. These are ever-bearing strawberries. I prefer the ever-bearing, of course, because you get strawberries all season long. So this is gonna be our pumpkin bed. That's why it's empty, because the pumpkin is there. It's gonna fill up this whole area, plus those little yellow spots are also pumpkin seeds being planted there. Back here, my husband put edos, so we can use the edo leaves. I don't know that we're gonna get that much edos, but the leaves is what I'm really wanting to cook with. And this one is the poi and bok choy. Yesterday we cut a lot of it the, around the out, outer edges to um, make soup. And on here, are the potatoes as usual. Here we have the okra and I have a few varieties pink and also red and this is the hot pepper bed. So all these are going to be hot peppers going all the way down. And this is our bush beans, celery, and down that end is going to be bitter melon and some cantaloupe. And the other one is cucumbers and some beans. And we also have another set of cucumbers here 
and some climbing spinach. Get this hammock over us. So this is probably going to be our first crop area here. And this is where the garlic is. You can see they're huge. I'm waiting for the scapes to start coming and then we'll be able to harvest that. Those are yummy. And radishes will be next. And there's some carrots. They're doing really well. I gotta thin that area out, that's really bushy. And here is beets. So we got a few rows of beets here. Different colors. This is beets also, it looks like Swiss chard, but it's beets. And here I did a second growing of bok choy. So you can see it's really small, but it's gonna get there. And in this bed is the cauliflower and broccoli all the way down this way. On the trellis this year, we decided to grow our beans. And uh, if you know this one, it's called long bean or bora. Or in Trinidad, they call it bodhi. And it's a very long bean. I use it in my chow mein. If you watched a chow mein video, um, it's a very sweet bean and crunchy in texture. Here I have some bitter melon and that's the trellis for it. Okay, and now on this entire bed here, this half moon shaped bed is our um, eggplant. And uh, this usually produces a lot of eggplants so if you're friends and family you know you get a lot of eggplant this is also a bitter melon here and it's a different type it's a longer bitter melon and this entire area here is some more kale but unlike the other ones in the bin these grow about four feet high and this kale will feed me until October, November. That's another reason I like kale more than lettuce. Did I show you the lettuce? I think it's over here. So much to see, guys. I hope you guys are planting something this year. If you've never planted before, lettuce. There's there are two, but they're really, really tiny. Nice. I do like lettuce, I don't want you to think I don't, but I prefer the flavor of kale. And the way to soften kale, if you know, if you find it tough, is that once you get it to your size, or once you've chopped it up or ripped it up, however you do it, is to massage it with a little bit of olive oil, and that softens the texture, and then you can make whatever salad you like. So that's the trick to kale. And this is our tomato area. These trellises are amazing. I can't wait to see. Here we planted, Michael wanted a watermelon. So we'll see how that goes. And um, cantaloupe. Guys, don't be afraid to try growing anything. You'd be surprised. You'll be so shocked. In this little area, we grow so much. So I did the companion planting, as you can see, as I always do. For the tomatoes, they get basil and onions and marigolds. And the rest of the garden gets marigolds and onions. So the companion gardening really does help me to stave off critters. We do have rabbits in my neighborhood. We have rabbits, skunks, raccoons. One just walked across my path yesterday, broad daylight. So it's not that we don't have pests, but I think these measures have helped me over the years to stave them off. And there's about 400 onions in this entire yard. 
so you have to really load up the onions and I never waste them because there's always something to do this is the extra basil and rosemary and now we're getting into our orchid area sorry about the noise from the AC it smells amazing here this is my Queen Elizabeth lilac and she's in full bloom and smells amazing in this area orchids hanging under the basket some bonsais this is a tambourine bonsai. Here's a jasmine bonsai. Eucalyptus. The orchid area is really grown. A lot of the orchids had babies, so I repotted them. Some are in bloom, like this lady here. She's got quite a long spike. Beautiful. This is actually the um, vanilla bean orchid. It actually will produce a vanilla bean maybe for me one day. The transition outside this year for the orchids have been great. I mean, we didn't really have any issues. Beautiful. Um, the weather's been really wonderful here in Southern Ontario. So they're loving it. This one's like little firecrackers. Very cute. And you can see this area here it's got this mesh on the top and then put some tree branches. That's just to break up the light so it's not too much direct light. That's probably the only thing that would damage them. And I'm hoping my Vanda will start to bloom soon. So that brings us to the end of our tour. I hope you enjoyed this one more than the last because the last one was pretty bare and dry. But, um, yeah, if you have any questions about anything that I do or plant, please feel, feel free to ask or send me a message. I'll be happy to help you and answer your questions. And I hope you enjoyed our garden tour today. And I hope God blesses you all with a wonderful gardening season. And I thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And we'll see you again when it's summer. So sometime in June, July, I'll do another video. Thanks for watching.